Infield rifles certainly are fast, and even faster in the hands of a more well-acquainted man. This is a number four, which is much different than the old-style SMLE rifles for a number of reasons. While these are a bit heavier than the older guns, the addition in weight nets the user a stronger action, much better sights, and a thicker barrel. Also, from a production standpoint, the number four was a much better rifle as they were cheaper and easier to make. Less milling was required to complete a receiver and bits of the SMLE like the nose cap were discarded altogether. The rifle is of course famous for having served with the British troops through World War II and still is technically in service with the Canadian Rangers at least until they are all equipped with their recently selected new rifles in the next few years. This means that the rifle has an incredibly long service history and a fine rifle it is. But let's take a look at a few of its features. One thing that immediately jumps out at me personally is the charger bridge. It's not like the old SMLE's rounded charger bridge at all. Not that this is bad necessarily, but it is easier to machine. It does of course have that lightning fast Lee Enfield action and optimally placed bolt handle. Also the bolt throw is still the very short throw that it was on the old SMLE's, meaning that a user can cycle these very quickly. Especially if you place your thumb and forefinger on the bolt handle and middle finger on the trigger. The rifle can be manually cocked by grabbing the cocking piece, and of course it is cock unclosed just like the old rifles. The safety is also actuated by the user's right thumb, and the British were insistent that all users, like today, learn to shoot right-handed if you're left-handed. To me that seems like a pretty good solution to the ambidexterity problem that so many designers have to face today. The rifles feature either a zinc alloy butt plate or a brass butt plate for storing your rifle's cleaning kit. Also, the most distinguishing feature of the number 4 is the rear sight, with a peep 0 to 300 yards, or you can flip it up to reveal a ladder with sighting up to 1300 yards. Although, I do suppose there's a bit of optimism in actually hitting something at 1300 yards. Now, of course, as mentioned, the nose cap of the SMLE was eliminated, and you do see a bit of barrel extending beyond the front sight post. Magazines do hold 10 rounds and are detachable for cleaning, but of course you are intended to load them via charger clips through the top of the rifle. This can be a bit tricky and you can get rim locked despite presence of design features intended to prevent this. But let's shoot the rifle a little bit. And here, just for the hell of it, I thought I might try and shoot off 10 rounds as fast as I could. That never ceases to amaze or entertain. But really, a day at the range with an infield rifle is always a pleasure. You can find them for decent prices as they pretty much all wound up on the surplus market. They do pop up on proxy bid quite often for a few hundred bucks and you can have yourself a very fun, very historically significant long gun that is sure to bring you years of enjoyment and shooting pleasure.
Special thank you to Ventura Munitions for helping us out with the cost of ammo, and we hope to see you all next time.